Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session. We're about to start the webinar. Um, great to have you over. I see a lot of you joining. Now we have about you know, more than 100 people. So uh, thanks for joining. We're about to start in a minute. Uh, my name is Thibault. I work at Rental Scale-Up and as well as Price Labs. And joining with us is Richie. Richie, I was just warming up the room. <laughs> How are you? Fantastic. Doing good, yeah. Doing good. Thank you so much. Great. So as I was saying, we have more than 200 people already uh, joining. Um, um, so we're going to have a few, just a few slides at some point to talk about trends that we go uh, live using the tool. It's going to be interactive. And at the end of the session, we're going to have a Q&A. Um, so that you have time to ask us questions, something's not clear, or really, really, our goal is to make it super actionable for you today. Um, any thoughts or so things to share? And by the way, I, I hope I hope we have a great start of the year. It's also important. How about you, Rich? Any thoughts or anything to share before we get started? No. Um, let's get started. All right. All right, all right. Um, also, I would like to thank Neha, who's organizing this, this event, and she kindly also has, uh, I will start showing some slides, but beforehand, just we are, so we have a feel of the room here at the moment, uh, we have a quick poll, uh, if you uh, can feed it up so you can understand uh, who about it is in the room. Um, so... Um, uh, so oh, is a question, how long presentation will be? So, uh, it's slides and demo. So we go live and it's going to be under 60 minutes and it is recorded. You'll get a link with the recording, but do attend because otherwise you can't get your questions. And Neha, thank you. I started sharing the questions. So please, uh, answer the questions again. It will really enable us to tailor the experience for, for yourself. So you have to, I guess, go through different questions. Oh, that's the first question. Okay. All right, give you some time. Are you a Price Labs customer? Yes or no? Right. And guys, this is this is helpful for us to understand so that we know uh, where to set the tone of the presentation as well. Um, our our goal is to make it extremely hands on. Um, but at the same time, want to be want to be uh, curious about if there are not uh, if if there are a lot of people who don't actively use price apps, we we want to know uh, how to how to step into that uh, how to step into it. Right. Uh, one additional thing that uh, I uh, would also say is that uh, please do note that we can't hear you speak. Um, if you have a question, there's a Q and A thing at the bottom. Uh, please do ask questions there. And uh, this webinar, like Tipo said, is getting recorded. So, uh, so we'll definitely uh, be sharing this recording. All right, all right, all right. So, for this this poll, I think I'm just checking with Neha whether everybody has gone through the replies. Can we see the answer one way or another to get a feel of the room? I think we can. So, yeah, perfect. Thank you. So, first question was. Are you a price type customer? 87% yes. And have all the questions been asked already? Or not? We had all the questions in store. If not, we'll move on to the presentation already. Okay. We have a couple of more questions. I'll just launch. Okay. Cool, but we can. I think we can. We can go into the presentation and then parallelly ask questions. Uh, Tibo. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. So, all right, let's do it. Tibo, you're staying on your screen, right? Yeah, yes, I am. Okay. Right on it. Sorry about that. No worries. I just got the QA questions for stuff. Very interesting, but in the way. But now okay. I can go. Can you guys all see my screen? Good. And so welcome to this unlock 2023 growth, your, uh, your growth potential uh thing. So our goal again, as just as Richie said, is to be very actionable. 
Uh, what we'll do, we'll look at the big industry trends that are hitting uh, the, our industry this year. And then, and I'll cover that part. And thanks to Richie, we'll then look at how you can see how these trends are maybe affecting your local market. And then we'll see how these, you know, let's say industry trends and these local trends are then affecting in turn your own listings performance, really. So we go like, for example, from big to small, to macro to mi micro. Uh, but first, a quick word of introduction, maybe who are we? And Richie, do you want to maybe introduce yourself for a few who don't know you? Sure. Uh, if, you've, if you've been on Price Labs webinars before, you've probably uh, heard my voice or, or seen me around. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders at Price Labs. Um, uh, we like yeah have been doing this for eight years um and yeah uh, really excited about doing this have done this uh for the last couple of years at the start of every year and end of every year every year as well so uh really excited about that we have lots of new uh features and products in store as well that we've made changes over the last year so uh it'll be interesting to walk through those uh today and talk about how they can impact and how you can think about incorporating them as you talk about, uh, as you look look at uh, what's happening in your market. That's great. Uh, so my term, I'm Thibault. I'm the founder of Rental Scale Up. It's a short-term rental news website that now is proudly a part of Price Labs. And I'm also the head of product marketing at Price Labs. Um, so to get started, just so the idea here is to look at different trends and hypotheses about the market. And then the idea is like to you know, share with you, you know what we're hearing about the market, what we're seeing. And as we all know, it's great to know what people are saying about you know the overall, you know, for example, short-term rental market or the overall US, the overall Europe. But what's gonna be interesting for us today, we'll start from these big trends so you know what they are. And then Richie is gonna show you how you can see whether it's also happening in your market, right? But first, let's start with talking about what people are saying. So for example, what we what we hear from different sources is that um, after the big boom in, in, in demand and revenues that we recorded in 2021, in 2022, 23, for example, in the US should actually still be a view of growth, but just not as fast as in the past, right? So instead of being above 20% year on year, the growth should be barely above 5%. That's the idea. So. Um, same thing, we hear that uh, ADRs will stabilize as well, will be pretty flat. So again, that's what people say about overall, but as we know, what's it like in your own market? And we, saw, we see this again with, with Richie. So just again, so you know, that's what people are hearing and saying. And still, when we write every week in, in the rental scale about the industry, when we analyze the market, we also want to look at other growth factors, right? Um, indeed, not everything is negative. And I'll go, I'll talk a bit later about what's negative, but there's some positive to hitting our industry. And here are, for example, three different trends that we believe could be good for the oval industry, right? For example, um, um, since 2020, we know that demand in big cities has been low. What I mean is that uh, whereas Traditional vacation rental markets like you know, seaside, coastal, mountain rebounding very rebounded very fast. It was not the same in big cities. You no, know, from Chicago to Paris, uh, London to um, Bangkok, um, uh, the demand was very very low, and it has come back up, but slowly. So hopefully, what we see this year, we see a back demand back in this in his uh, in his destinations. Uh, of course, the only caveat we put here. If these are cities where stronger regulation is now in place, of course, demand will be limited by the lack of supply. Another trend to note is that <clears throat> over the last two years, what we've seen is that people in the US, for example, have been traveling a lot within North America. Or people in Europe have been traveling a lot within Europe, right? Crossing boundaries, you know, uh, but within Europe. Um, since last summer, we've seen more and more, for example, Americans going to Europe. So hopefully with, for example, Asia reopening as a destination, but as well as a source of travelers, China is reopening finally. We hope that if you're exposed to international travelers, you should also be getting a bit more of this. So that's also positive. And last thing we wanna say is that despite all the <clears throat> talks of recession, 
we do still see that as an hypothesis that travel is still a need for a lot of people. That should sustain the, the thing. So that's the, the, the positive factors. Richie, on this so far, anything to, to add? Um, no, there's just one question. Uh, what does ADR stand for? Uh, ADR stands for uh, average daily rate, right? What, what kind of a uh, price you're getting for a booking? Very good question. Um, yeah, thanks for yeah. sharing the question. Yeah. So cool. I, started, I started with the positives. Let me start with the negatives a bit because otherwise it's not um, <laughs> that fun. It's just something to have in mind, right? Uh, two things we hear, for example, and here I'm going to turn towards Airbnb, right? At Rightoscope, we follow a lot what Airbnb is, is doing, not just because we're obsessed with Airbnb. It's just for two things. It's just because what Airbnb is doing, observing, is priming a lot how the media or people talking around you may see the world. So it's important. And second, it is it is one of the biggest sources for bookings for a lot of us who have businesses, right? So it is important to know what's happening. The first thing that we've seen on social media a lot since last summer, especially in the US, people complaining about the Airbnb, Airbnb bust, meaning that people have been saying, well, I'm getting fewer bookings at my listing. It's going down. And we've heard this. So again, it's going to be interesting with, with uh, Richie to see whether that's happening in local markets. And we'll take examples and show you where to go in the data to see that. Is it also happening in your market that you see fewer listings per bookings, uh, fewer bookings per listing in that order? Second thing, <clears throat> and we were saying, well, it's because if you look at the data of, of Airbnb and maybe actually has more demand, where demand is, is growing for Airbnb overall, right? But maybe one of the issues is that also the number of listings is increasing. Um, and you know what? That's not, that's not going to stop, right? Airbnb clearly is pushing for more listings, for more hosts and all kinds of hosts, right? For example, right now in the US, they have like, they have this Airbnb it campaign running when they want, you know, people with a guest house, people with a private room, any kind of occasional host to also list their, their, their room. Why? Because Airbnb wants to lower the price on the overall platform. Airbnb is sometimes seen nowadays as an expensive, uh, expensive option for travel. So their goal is to get more supply to lower the prices, which of course is not necessarily what, what we want to happen. But again, that's overall, what does it mean in your local market? That's what you want you you want to know, but keep this in mind. And last thing in terms of negatives, and last slide of mine before we go into the live data, is um, things that are uncertain as well. Right, started with positive, let's, let's end with some negative. Of course, we hear in, for example, in Europe, in the US, about threats of recessions. Are we going to get into it? Not into it. It's not super clear, but let's say that it's on people's mind. Right, something else on people's mind, also in their wallets. In, in Europe, for example, is the high cost of energy, right? So purchasing power may touch you know, travelers. We know that people still want to travel. It's a need, it's after two years of COVID, but maybe they will stay closer home. Maybe they will take shorter stays, right? So we'll see how it's gonna play out. You know, maybe you know, if hotels are too expensive, they're gonna to go to shorter rentals. It can, can play both ways, but it's really something to have in mind. Um, Another thing is conflicts, you know, there's different uh, conflicts and wars. How it's going to turn out? I'm not going to predict anything here. It's just duplicated. And last thing to have in mind is regulations. What's new here is that even in, in markets where uh, authorities were friendly to vacation rentals, things are changing. Uh, for example, in the US, in a, in a steamboat market, now there's a clear ban on, on new vacation rentals. So even traditional places, uh, places that were positive towards our industry may be turning negative. So uh, if you're not part of your local community of, of uh, short-term rental operators, please join to know what's going on because that's clearly something that can impact, obviously, your market and your business. And again, as I say, it's not just for big cities anymore. It's it's It may be coming to you. So I hope it's not too frightening and you knew that. But help is on the way and help is Richie. So Richie, I'll let you take it away. Um, very cool, yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, there are there are certain quick questions that maybe if you want to uh, answer because that's that's a little bit of your expertise. Uh, Philip's asking, do you expect supply to decrease because of Airbnb bust? To su supply to decrease, yeah, <clears throat> it's it's a good question in the sense that 
supply would decrease overall for Airbnb. If you said, you know what, Airbnb, I'm not happy with you. I'm going to go elsewhere. One, what alternatives do we really have? Of course, there's Verbo, there's Booking. Why not? Um, but again, overall supply should actually increase given everything that Airbnb is doing, right, to get new new uh, uh, new listings, right? They have they are advertising very heavily. They're doing everything they can to um, um, increase the supply. What we you could see though is that I would say as actually we're linking to recession inflation, also interest rates. What could be happening though is that some people who borrowed a lot of money to have one, two, three different short-term rentals may have some issues paying back and may have to sell or may just have to stop having their short-term rental because they just can't pay back the money. But again, that's something that may happen to some people, but I guess that overall, probably listings will, will well, I mean, that's what we've seen in some predictions at least, but that's, again, that's what Airbnb is hoping that supply should be increasing. Got it, got it, got it. Um, and then um, there is, uh, I think uh, we've we've answered this, but um, what is revenge travel? Uh, you used one of those terms that uh, some people are not familiar with, uh, Thibaut. Sure. So <clears throat> revenge travel. So the idea is that you've been stuck at home for two years and you're like, you know what? Whatever happens this year, I'm going to see my family. I'm going to see my friends or or maybe you've been stuck too much with your family. I'm going to go away for a long time. So notion of revenge travel is notion of that people want to make up for the lost time because of lockdowns. And think about this. I, I was reading this morning, like people in, in China, for example, some people were stuck, well, stuck, were in Hong Kong for three years and have not seen their family back in mainland China. I mean, you think about this, right? These people will want to travel, even though there's high COVID rates right now in China, they are going there because they want to see their families, right? Kind of makes sense. So that's so the idea of revenge travel as well here is the notion that, and I've seen data as well, is that even if people are really, you know, uh, high energy costs, they have fewer, less money to spend, they're still keeping a budget on for travel, which it is very, usually it's travel is the first thing to go down, right? You, really, you save on this and not this time apparently. So I, maybe it's the, again, it's the pandemic doing this, people still want to say, you know what, we're still going to travel this year. But that's my, my caveat here. If prices like average daily rates or ADRs, your rates increase so high over the last two years, be careful not maybe to inflate too much this year. Because people again may not have uh, may not be easy, as easy for them to pay high prices. So that's the the caveat here. I would say revenge travel, but maybe revenge economy travel. Let's let's see again, market by market. Love it, love it. Um, there is there is a, a lot of uh, questions around uh, potential forecasting and and what we think about the market. Um, I'd recommend uh, if we can uh, if we can take some of these uh, a little later and uh, maybe maybe get into how do we how do we discover uh, what happens what's happening in your local markets in your yes. on your properties etc right and then uh, then we can uh, hopefully if we have time remaining we can come back to some of these uh, questions right for example i see i see questions like uh, hey uh, how does uh, what's the future of uh, uh, africa or or europe or um, america in reference like uh, what's the future of a uh, certain uh, city like chicago or what's the future of, of certain places right um, it's hard to answer that specific question in a broad webinar but our intent is to give you uh, tools uh, as a part of this webinar so that uh, you can uh, answer some of those questions uh, uh, on your own. Uh, having said that, if also, uh, unfortunately, this is a packed webinar where we may not be able to take questions that are not directly related to the topic that we're talking about. But at any point of time, if you have questions about uh, anything, please do reach out to our support team. Uh, we uh, work uh, Monday through Friday, uh, all hours and on weekends with limited support, uh, we uh, try to get to your questions as soon as possible. Um, one, if Neha, if you could quickly launch a poll around market dashboards as I'm as I'm talking about this. Um, at 
in Price Labs, you'd see uh, four key places that you can use to try to understand what's happening in your market and uh, for your property. The number one place is uh, if you're trying to understand broad market trends, what's happening in your area, in your region, uh, whether you own a property or you don't own a property, um, it it is via market dashboards, right? And guys, uh, you'd see a poll pop up on your screen. If you can try to answer that poll, it'll give me a sense of of whether uh, you uh, like whether you are uh, whether you, how much the team how much the people know about market dashboards. And so, accordingly, as we talk about market dashboards and get deeper into it uh, a little while later, I'll be able to tailor it accordingly. Um, cool. I am for some reason seeing an ability to vote for the poll. Uh, guys, if, uh, if I'm not sure if, if you're already seeing it at the bottom of your screen, you'd have seen a poll thing pop up um, and hopefully it's, it's in the center and middle of your screen. Uh, if you can uh, vote for it and uh, let us know uh, your uh, familiarity with market dashboards. Uh, so market dashboards, general market trends, whether that's your city level or your block level or what's happening in this in this neighborhood or region, right? You can track up to thousand. Uh, you can track thousand or up to five thousand listings. That's that's kind of how uh, we work today. And in due course, we'd also be expanding that to broader markets. Um, number two. Uh, if you have a portfolio of properties, how do you look at how those properties are doing? Uh, one relative to uh, your prior years and also relative to uh, the markets. That's where you're going to use uh, market dashboards and portfolio analytics combination. If you're looking at individual property, um, and I saw the poll about neighborhood data a little while ago. If you're looking at individual property, we're going to look into neighborhood data and there is there are new features that we have released today. And so we're going to talk about those. And finally, if you're quickly trying to gauge how your property is doing, we're going to look at performance metrics, right? So we, we have quite a bit of it packed here uh, that we're going to cover. Do note that this is a little bit of an... Uh, advanced market class uh, uh, master class and we're going to cover certain specific uh, things purely related to uh, these trends and uh, and how to find those trends but if you are looking for uh, if you are looking for training on price labs we do daily trainings on dynamic pricing um, and uh, we and dynamic pricing 101s and dynamic pricing 201 we do every uh, once a week. Uh, portfolio analytics, we run trainings once a month and market dashboards, we run training once a month. Um, we'll share a link with you as well, how to find those trainings, but you can also find all of these recordings in on our YouTube channel. With that, uh, can I, uh, is the is the poll on this thing done? Okay. Um, okay. So uh, I know like I see not a lot of people uh, are very familiar with uh, with uh, market dashboards or don't use market dashboards. Um, that's absolutely fine. Uh, we're going to start with market level data. You don't always, you don't need to know market level data al always. You may want to know your property level data or your individual property data, right? Uh, so we're going to dive into that as well. Uh, but if you are curious about market dashboards and how to use them, um, I think the most latest video on our YouTube channel is about market dashboards. So go check that out. It's a training class that we did, uh, I want to say last week on market dashboards and how to use them. Cool. Uh, with that, I'll, I need access to share my screen, Tibo. How do I do that? Okay. All righty. I am so going what, to- what, what, what Rich is prepping again for the, for the, uh, what we're doing in the sense that even if you wanted ideas, you know, uh, data for Africa and the rest, usually what you want is data in your African market, in your city, right? In your city in Europe. That's really what we're doing now. And we are, we've picked two examples, right? I think we picked two examples of cities. But again, the way we do this right now, you can do it in every market that's depending on you, right? That's how we answering, I will answer globally the questions I've seen indeed about specific markets. What it Rich is showing now is how you can do it in your own market. Take it yeah. away. Um, cool, very cool. Again, I'm not going to get into the basics of uh, how to build a market dashboard, how to go about that, every single detail about market dashboard. 
please do refer to our uh, YouTube channel or subscribe to our next uh, masterclass on what are market dashboards and how to use them. Uh, but let's, uh, working with the assumption uh, that uh, you've either used market dashboards before or knowing uh, what market dashboards are essentially a, a radius or an or a area where we track all the properties on Airbnb and VRBO and try to make sense of metrics in terms of what's happening in those markets, right? Uh, for this presentation, uh, thanks to Thibaut, uh, we picked two uh, areas. And uh, I, uh, as I was doing this, I also pulled out a few others just as I was trying to compare. But two areas that we're trying to go through is uh, Chicago market and the uh, Paris market, right? Um, so, uh, and we're going to look at that and try to understand what's happening here, right? Again, uh, for basics, we look at uh, data on Airbnb and VRBO as we are trying to build uh, these dashboards. Um, you'll see here at the top left, view comp sets. Uh, I'm trying to see where it says ABB. It's basically Airbnb whole market. And then I could also see VRBO whole market, right? And so if I'm trying to understand what's happening on those OTAs, I can try to understand that via that. Uh, the data for this comes via, we scrape, we scrape data on from Airbnb and VRBO every single day. Uh, and then we try to make sense of what's happening, uh, what kind of blocks exist, what kind of patterns exist. Uh, we've been trying, we've been doing this for the last eight years, uh, where we've been gathering data around various markets. And for the last two and a half years, we've been gathering data uh, absolutely every single place in the market, right? Um, and then as we talk about this, I'm going to introduce uh, certain um, certain. Uh, terms that uh, I'm also going to try to explain, but please do pardon my own ignorance because I sometimes may not know that uh, it's, it's a term that you're not familiar with. And if you're not, uh, we'll, we'll uh, catch up on that, right? Um, cool. Uh, one of the things that uh, I wanted to quickly show you, like uh, what uh, Tibo had mentioned, uh, supplies is increasing in certain markets, et cetera, right? So for example, we have a, a Chicago market dashboard here which is around Logan, Logan Square, and we're only tracking two kilometers uh, of uh, Logan Square area. If I scroll down and if I go to a supply and demand, normally in your market dashboard, it'll be hidden like this. If you click show graphs, you can see what's happening in that two kilometer radius of supply uh, over the last 15 months or so. So you'd see, hey, the supply used to be 900 uh, properties and now it's jumped to about 1000 properties so uh, so a, a good 12% uh, increase in supply in a very similar way if i look at uh, paris i'd see a supply increase from 4300 or it went down and has this systemic systemic peaks to now uh, 5000 that's about a 15% increase and then the reason why i pulled some of these other dashboards is because uh, Oh, I thought I had a Dubai dashboard open here. Um, yeah, so if I if I show you uh, Dubai, which has this uh, crazy uh, supply increase, where it went from uh, two thousand properties to uh, five thousand properties over a period of fifteen months, right? Just uh, extremely lucrative market, and some of the things that uh, the government there is doing uh, to attract, right? Again, uh, these dashboards, these uh, active listings, can look very very different based on what market you're in uh, our goal is to be to show you hey if you're trying to understand what's happening in terms of uh, supply in your market you'll uh, watch our webinar on market dashboards create a market dashboard and you'll be able to see what's happening in terms of active listings are they dramatically increasing not increasing uh, so that uh, when you when you think about has my occupancy dropped or has my occupancy stayed same or has my occupancy increased uh, you also a little bit understand how is that uh, getting impacted from the active listings in the market number two um, it is uh, the thing that you also want to look at is this uh, sense of demand and i'll actually go back to uh, one of the other dashboards that i had here, right? Um, so if I if I look at, for example, uh, Chicago as a demand, right? Here, uh, what this is, is every week, how many bookings are coming in per listing, right? Um, not for stay, but bookings coming in, right? Create, bookings created. 
so if you see uh, last Jan, um, there was a uh, 0.62 bookings coming uh, or in the week of Jan 10th, or maybe I'll go a week before that, uh, week of Jan 3 to Jan 9th, 0.52 bookings per listing, right? And note that listings haven't dramatically increased, uh, but uh, this time around, it's 0.76, and that's kind of the that's kind of the point that Thibault was trying to make, although this is a very, uh, uh, you know, uh, pointed data, uh, but uh, potentially we may expect some demand to come back in these uh, cities over time, right? Um, and then um, as we go through, you're going to see uh, some of this, right? Um, so there's this whole conversation around Airbnb bust and has the bookings decreased, right? But if we, if we look at there's not a lot of change in occupancy here, right? There is this decrease in average bookings, but that's that's seasonality. If I compare, for example, my uh, October, November, December to my October, November, December here in 2021, not a material change, actually in some cases higher than last year uh, or higher than 2021. And that's, that's an indicator for you to saying, is my market getting affected by that Airbnb bust? Where people really uh, start thinking about a little bit Airbnb bust is uh, maybe in certain markets, uh, and I'm, I'm wondering if I have any market like that here, um, maybe Honolulu, um, where you'd see some of this, but really we're not seeing in terms of uh, occupancies, like for example, uh, in Honolulu as well, right? We're not seeing any of those occupancies drop. I have Andalusia here, uh, and let me quickly pull up, let's see what Andalusia looks like, um, same. Uh, average bookings not particularly dropping while you see these uh, supplies really, really high, right? Uh, at an individual le level, some users might experience this, but at an Airbnb level, uh, it's it's not it's not particularly a, a material change that we're seeing. But again, it may depend very, very heavily on your market. And so you do want to look at your market, right? Um, Cool. Uh, in terms of uh, supply uh, and whether the supply has crazily increased or not, do note that we're seeing uh, 15 months of data here. It is entirely possible in some of these markets that uh, in 2020 and early 2021, a lot of supply went offline, went to those uh, long-term stays kind of stuff. And now it's only starting to come back up, but we do see a steady increase in a lot of markets. Your market may look different. And so that's what you're trying to uh, see here and show here, right? Um, then um, one of the things that you want to look at is to go down and look at these occupancy graphs. And uh, these occupancy graphs, uh, Typically, when you'd, when you'd be in this, it, it looked like this because it only shows you occupancy for uh, future days. But you can scroll this back and you'd see what in your market typical occupancies have looked like, right? Um, I'll show this to you now on Paris kind of a graph where uh, in Paris, if I see, if I scroll back, you can see what the occupancies had looked like. And uh, I'll now zoom into a, a specific period here uh, of... Uh, October of uh, 2023, uh, um, and you'd start seeing uh, some of these uh, peaks come up. And uh, Thibaut, as a European, do you want to explain what these peaks are for? As a French uh, person, hopefully you're very excited about these peaks. Um, sure. Um, uh, for some reason, my screen has gotten smaller, but I'm pretty sure you're showing September to October right now, probably on zooming yes. in. Uh, so yeah. the idea is like if we if we zoom in in, in September October you can see really these um uh, these strange bumps right and kind of regular right kind of every seven or every two weeks basically what is it what is it what, what we can see already now in January you can see for September October the dates where the the games the matches for the uh, world, uh, the Rugby World Cup is happening in France. So it's happening in France in several places, but among which, of course, Paris, where the bigger games will be. And if, uh, and that's why you really see these bumps already. So it, so what's very interesting, I will, I don't want to talk, go into it now, but I, I can even tell you that the, the highest bumps is when New Zealand is playing in Paris. Not surprisingly, right? So basically, when we, we played a game around this, we could even basically see which, which sort of, which uh, which uh, which nation was playing? Just to say again, uh, obviously, I had no clue it was coming. Uh, yes, I'm excited now that I know, but I have no clue. I did see I did see a game uh, 20 years ago when the World Cup was in Paris. 
Uh, but that's just to show you, you know what, looking at the trends, I was like this, what's happening in Paris? And that's something you should also look at, right? If you don't know why there are some bumps, well, you should be you should be worried, like in what's happening, one, number two, and is my, are my prices adapting to this? And it's a question basically also, uh, Richie, people have in, um, in a Q&A, they say, but if market dashboard sees that there's like a uh, peak in demand, isn't yeah. Price Lab automatically increasing my prices? Well, how does Absolutely. it work? Absolutely. Price Labs is automatically increasing those prices if we're seeing uh, if we're seeing a peak in demand, right? Um, but this is this is only to show you like if you're trying to understand occupancy, some of these peaks. Uh, for example, this is Chicago. Chicago Marathon happens in October, and you'd see these peaks in, uh, for example, Chicago, right? Already uh, twelve percent occupied uh, for October twenty twenty three. Um, I, I would imagine some of these people have have uh, potentially uh, uh, left some money on the table. Um, and but you can also go back and see, hey, how do how does market occupancies look like uh, uh, twenty like fifteen months ago, right? And so I can scroll back and see what do occupancies look like. The whole intent of this being, uh, do remember, if you're using price labs, uh, you can use a portfolio analytics and our neighborhood data to make very good sense. But if you're trying to uh, zoom out and trying to understand the trends of your area or your uh, or your market, or you're trying to invest in a new market and you're trying to understand trends there, that's when you can really look into these market dashboards and try to understand one, uh, what's happening in terms of supply, is supply dramatically increasing? Uh, is there uh, like in terms of in terms of number of bookings that are coming in, is that is that dramatically changing? And then also like in terms of occupancies, uh, looking at historical to saying like in the recent past, for example, um, December 31st, had or Jan first uh, December thirty first had a fifty seven percent occupancy uh, in twenty in twenty twenty two versus uh, in twenty twenty one it was about sixty so not or some something like that so not materially different uh, in terms of uh, in terms of those patterns right slightly lower but not materially different um, so 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 that's helpful for you to look at uh, as you're trying to understand uh, markets that's at again a broad based level if you're trying to understand market market dashboards right next i want to dive into oh by the way i forgot to mention this because the data science team and engineering team asked me to say this at the start of the webinar i'm going to show you certain things uh, but do note that we're not uh, uh, set up to have, we have a little over 300 odd people on this webinar. We're not set up to have 300 people click price labs or certain buttons at the same time. So uh, try to grasp it in. Don't try to follow me along to the T. If we do sometimes, uh, like for everyone, the product would slow down, right? Um, cool. Next, uh, I want to, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Thibaut, anything else on market dashboards or any questions on market dashboards that you want me to cover before we spend uh, some time on no, personal analytics I, I, and then some time I, I, on neighborhood dashboard. Just looking at the question, give you some context. So, so we were market dashboard, which is a separate product indeed you can purchase. And that's the question of you pay per report. That's the, that's the question. And now we're switching over to the, I would say the regular dynamic pricing of, of price labs, just for context. Thanks. Uh, cool, yeah. Um, so, so next we are switch, switching on to portfolio analytics. I have a backend view here, but uh, essentially, uh, if you're using Price Labs uh, in the top black bar, you'd see dynamic pricing, portfolio analytics, and market dashboards. Portfolio analytics is a free to use tool. So, uh, as long as you connect Price Labs to your uh, Airbnb or your PMS, you'll be able to use portfolio analytics. And I'm going to dive into a portfolio analytics here. But essentially, what portfolio analytics is is it's a it's a way for me to see uh, my uh, booking data uh, summarized in various KPIs, charts, and graphs. Um, not going to go through everything here. Uh, I am hoping again uh, you can attend one of our master classes on portfolio analytics or go into a YouTube channel. Either our first or second video, uh, most recently updated, was about portfolio analytics. Um, you'd be one. You can see uh, your own occupancy trends here very quickly to saying, hey, how was how was my occupancy doing in 2021 versus how is my occupancy doing in 2023? Note that for future months, you'll still pick up uh, relative because all of these months are, are really far out. But you may want to say, hey, what's happening in terms of my January month where my January month is relatively uh, lower occupied, right? Uh, so that's, that's kind of how you can try to make sense of what's happening on your property. But you may also want to compare against uh, the market, right? And so we're going to get into that. So, um, so Richie, quick, quick, yeah. quick question here. So basically we're saying it's a free tool. 
I can yeah. basically import my, I can connect to Airbnb and Verbo or my PMS and import the, my listings and my bookings. And here, what you just saw, that was the graphs that price lab analysis based on my actual data, right? That's what yeah. we were saying. Exactly. Nice. This is, this is uh, actual data every day. It comes in every day. Uh, we uh, update and add to these graphs, right? Uh, based on your own actual data. Again, there's there's a lot of wealth of information in these in these uh, in portfolio analytics that I'm not going to get into. Uh, but what I do want to get into is uh, a graph here that is that or a section here that's called pacing. Pacing essentially refers to um, how are you doing this year or how are you doing today compared to same time last year, right? So, for example, uh, if to help you make sense of what I just said. Um, for example, I'm looking at, and this is probably very zoomed in because it's my, one second. Yeah. So uh, for example, I'm looking at uh, my occupancy for Feb 1. And again, I'm looking at my portfolio's occupancy for Feb 1. And what I can see is the solid line is as of today, I am 13 and a half percent occupied. And uh, I don't know how clear it is. So maybe I'll just zoom in. Um, and say, hey, uh, Feb 1, Feb 1, Feb 1. Um, okay, on Feb 1, I am 13.5% uh, occupied as of today. Uh, and same time last year, so same time last year, by that I mean on, uh, on Jan 10th, 2022, uh, how occupied was I for the same date? For the same date, I was... 28 uh uh 28 uh percent occupied and today i am only 13 and a half percent occupied my own properties so i am pacing behind on the market i'm pacing behind in terms of my last year right and so 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 that's this is a very uh, sorry i've zoomed in uh, far too much but this is a very uh, important thing for you to try to understand how your properties are doing and let me sorry zoom back in here yeah, it is very important for you to try to understand how your uh, property is pacing relative to market, because if it's pacing uh, far too slower, you know that you may not be able to hit the same revenues and you may want to do something uh, dramatically, right? Price steps, of course, adjust, right? But uh, do note that we adjust uh, relative to the base price that you set. And sometimes you may need to look into that base price itself, right? And Richie, Richie going yeah. back to some questions here. So we, when we were in market dashboards, we could look at the trends that you know, we were recording from the overall data from Airbnb and Verbo. And here, obviously, as we said, it's my bookings we're looking at. And that could be any bookings I have, right? From booking.com or even direct, yeah. right? D depends on what you connect, right? So if, you, if you've if you just connected price labs to Airbnb, I, of course, won't be able to capture your booking.com or VRBO or direct bookings, right? If you've connected us to your PMS, then we get all of your reservation data. And then that's what uh, that's what we'd see, right? It depends on what system you connect price labs to, right? Mm -hmm. But this is, this is useful information because for same time last year, uh, how how occupied were you for in the future, right? And um, in a similar way, um, there's a little bit of complication that we can add around here in terms of pickup. Um, let me see if I add this here um, and let me zoom in here. So uh, again, uh, one additional word that I've introduced to you, pacing, same time last year, uh, how, how you were doing, right? Uh, pickup pick up refers to in the last seven days, how much of your occupancy has come up, right? So for example, um, on this on this date, say Jan 14th, I am uh, today 49% occupied. Same time last year, I was occupied uh, 66%. And then uh, in the last seven days of that 49% occupancy, 12.5% occupancy has come in the last seven days itself, right? So so. It seems like there is a good, uh, at least there is, there is a decent enough demand for uh, last minute pickup here. Uh, the way you'd also see it, unfortunately, I don't have in my data set here, but you might sometimes see for a far out date, like a pickup really increasing. And then you want to be careful about why, are, like if you, have, if you manage a large portfolio, why is my pickup for a certain date really increasing? In a very similar pattern, you can start seeing ADRs for your properties. Uh, solid line, uh, your ADR, uh, for current year and uh, dotted line your ADR uh, for last year today, 
uh, ADR refers to your booked booked rates, right? It does not refer to your prices for uh, properties that are not booked. It refers refers to uh, your booked rates. And so you can see, hey, uh, how are my ADRs doing compared to last year, right? And then finally, rev bar, uh, slightly more complex metric, uh, will actually will not dive into it. Uh, if you're looking at occupancy and ADRs, those are very good ways for you to figure out how is my property doing. Sometimes we might feel uncomfortable. Hey, I'm not seeing any bookings, right? But you may want to see how was last year compared to this year. And um, and is it is it higher or lower, right? Uh, one caveat: if you're new to Price Labs, and if you were, uh, if you think you were underpriced with pricing previously, um, with Price Labs, we might pace relatively behind your last year's booking. This is called a booking curve, by the way. Uh, we might pace uh, slightly behind your last year's occupancies uh, because we are pricing slightly higher than uh, potentially what you were pricing uh, last year, right? And then secondly, um, if you were pricing a lot higher compared to uh, this year, and if your market's not really impacted by supply and demand, uh, you'll see uh, yourself pace a little bit higher, right? If you're pacing uh, far enough higher than your last year, you may want to consider increasing your prices, for example, right? Now, this is, this is all your internal data. We can add a complication here. If we wanted to understand this data with market data, you can click this uh, pink section, select any market dashboard. Again, this is this is where the paid part of it becomes, right? I could select a, a, a market dashboard. I can select potentially even a com set that's similar to my uh, listings. Com sets, again, uh, go refer to our masterclass on market dashboards, uh, where we talk about um, how we create com sets on market dashboards. But you could see that and you could click apply. And what you'd see is uh, also data from that market dashboard pop up. Uh, so for example, how my listings Again, this is a portfolio of listings in my account. I have, uh, I don't remember now, but like 500, 600 properties. This is an aggregate of my price and this is aggregate of how my price compares to the market. Um, this has uh, now become a, a hodgepodge of things, but let me drill down. But essentially what it's trying to say, and by the way, I click if I click on any of these legends, all of these lines will start to go away. Um, what I can now start to look at is, hey, what is my occupancy? relative to market occupancy. So I know, hey, on this date's market is really occupied. Uh, I want to understand why I'm still not occupied and maybe it's a high demand day and I want to increase prices. Um, I can also look at last year's occupancy. Last year, relatively, uh, my, pro like the, my properties were uh, more occupied and I'm occupied less this year. Let's also look at uh, market's occupancy last year compared to today. Uh, market, this dotted line, gray line is lesser than or similar. So then there's something happening with my portfolio, which is not getting as much occupancy, right? So then I want to figure out and, and try to solve for it. Um, feel free to reach out. If you if you see these scenarios, feel free to reach out and ask our team uh, to help as well, right? Um, this is this is if you're trying to understand at, a, uh, at your all portfolio level. Um, I'm very excited to say now you can actually do all of this at a individual listing level. Um, if you're, if you're, if you're using price steps already, you can see a pricing dashboard and you'll see all of your properties. And if you click on any property, the calendar will pop up. And on the right hand yeah. side to Richie, the calendar Richie, is the Richie, yeah. before we dive just again, just for context, because I see we've been through several tools, there's questions. So first we started out with market dashboards, then we went into uh portfolio analytics that was at the top, and then yeah. we switching to something else, right? To be clear. Because I got questions, where are we? Are we in market dashboard? So what I've just seen was not oh, yeah. in market right. dashboards. It was in a different tool called Portfolio Analytics, which is free for you to use. Just connect your data. We have it. And now yeah. we're switching to something else, Richie. Absolutely. Yeah. So three tools. Again, at the at the top of your uh, black screen, you can see three tools, uh, market dashboards, dynamic pricing, portfolio analytics. We first dive, dived into market dashboards, broader market data set, portfolio analytics. If you have, if you have, 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 properties you want to understand at an overall level, uh, or uh, like if you use groups and price labs, you want to understand at group levels, right? Uh, portfolio analytics is very, very powerful and you can look at all of that pacing information. Uh, now, if you're uh, if you're managing one, two, five or properties or very unique properties, you may want to look at some of this at an individual listing level. And this is where neighborhood data comes in. Uh, neighborhood data is we pull... Uh, 
300, 350 listings closest to your property. Uh, you may want to further uh, segment that down by clicking this, uh, looking at use our nearby listings that we automatically create and selecting what bedroom size do you want to uh, look at. And then uh, again, not going to describe neighborhood data in detail. We talk about this in 101 webinar, but uh, but if you go to say, for example, I'm just going to narrow this down to 60 days. Uh, this is an, a new thing that we have introduced. So, uh, so far, what you could see in Price Labs was, hey, what does the market occupancy look like, right? The graph looked a little bit different. It looked like a gray colored or yeah, a gray colored graph, I want to say. Uh, but now you'd see this as a line. Every day, what does the market occupancy look like? What you could now also do is add last year data and you'd see two lines pop up on last year data. One, you'd see the gray line, which is as of today, how occupied was the market uh, last year? Again, when I say today, it's like same time last today, right? So for uh, Feb 10th, on on uh on for feb 10th on um there's, there's a typo there on uh feb 10th how occupied was the market um uh, as of uh jan 10th and uh jan 10 2023 for feb 10 2023 we are 50 percent occupied but same time last year which is uh 2022 how occupied were we on jan 2022 right so the market was uh, about 28 percent occupied but what we also see here is now a final occupancy for the last year which is the dotted line which is the market uh at the end of that when when the feb 10th finally arrived market was uh 69 percent occupied one additional detail that you can also see here is what is the market pickup looking like? And I'm, I'm going to remove this, which is to saying, hey, if you see um, markets 53% occupied and 53% uh, occupied on this date, but uh, of that, just uh, like 20%, which is a very strong pickup, uh, has come in just in the last seven days. So I may want to look at and uh, make sure, like price labs will automatically start engaging prices, but this gives you a sense of uh, why my prices are the way they are. And sometimes you may want to tweak uh, by saying, hey, I'm too far ahead or too far behind, right? Uh, related to the market. What do I mean by market? If you click this location and show map, you'll be able to see uh, what are the other listings that we are tracking. So in this case, I'm looking at New Orleans and Huh, I wonder, oh, I was looking at uh, Valentine's Day weekend, huh? Um, but uh, yeah, you can uh, see in New Orleans how, how the market is behaving, both in terms of uh, occupancy and in terms of pickup uh, and in terms of how the last year was doing and how are we pacing against that, right? So this, this will help you better inform if you should at some places be tweaking prices, right? Sometimes we feel like, uh, hey, uh, our... For example, for July 4th, I should already be booked up, right? But what you can start seeing is, hey, maybe we are pacing behind, right? July 4th, or maybe this year on Feb 12th, price lapses prices would be potentially dramatically higher because we're pacing so far ahead uh, for, uh, for uh, New Orleans because last year, same time on this date, uh, we were only 25% occupied, but we are 53% occupied, uh, granted, uh, the final occupancy was 69%, but we still have days to go. And so we'll be we'll be pricing that day higher today. Richie, on this yeah. neighborhood data, a lot of questions. We were super, super interested by what you're showing. And just some uh, details about what you 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 uh, showed already. So first question is like yeah. uh, the data we see in neighborhood data, is it only Airbnb verbo? So where is it from? And this is from second... yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go on. Second. And second question is, uh, I think at some point you said how many listings were shown here. And the question is, how many listings uh, are we looking at? In terms of like yeah, how many yeah. are being considered, basically? Yeah. So if you're uh, one, uh, if you've like normally our data source that we use is Airbnb. If you're in a VRBO heavy market, you can reach out to our team and ask us to switch your data set to VRBO. But normally we look at Airbnb as the data set in most markets. Um, in some markets, we proactively also look at VRBO as a data set, if that's a prominent uh, OTA. Um, do note that no matter uh, 
most of you guys will be familiar with this, right? You sync your bookings or calendar across OTAs. You sync, uh, if you're using a PMS, uh, it's anyways automatically synced or you're using iCal or you're manually blocking your calendars, right? So when we look at occupancies, uh, what we get from these OTAs is uh, final occupancy because it already takes into account whether the booking is coming on Airbnb or some other channel we're starting to look at final occupancies uh, from that sense, right? Um, so, so that's where this data is coming from. Uh, number two, um, we this market dashboard, this, sorry, not market dashboard, neighborhood data will contain 300 to 350 properties. Uh, that is if I had all of this uh, at 100% in nearby listings. Um, so if I scroll down here, you'd see an overview table and that overview table would describe this all 350 and what is the composition of that 350? Because we want to look at a mixed set of data. Um, but if you just wanted to look at, uh, and which makes sense when you're trying to benchmark, say mine's a two bedroom and I just want to look at two bedrooms, um, you can also, uh, of course, like you'll filter down and you see, hey, I'm looking at 98 listings data. And in this graph, you can also, uh, not graph, map, you can see what where are those 98 listings. If I click on any of that listing, the Airbnb, uh, uh, sorry, the Airbnb link for that property will open up. So if I click on any of these dots, that will open up. Um, but this is this is a great way for you to try to understand how are your, in your particular neighborhood itself, right? Without, without paying for market dashboards or anything, uh, how is the occupancy doing uh, relative to one same time last year and uh, at full occupancy uh, for the last year, right? At like yeah. when the when the date had reached, what the what the data was saying. Um, so Richard, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, we have two minutes left. How do you want to spend it? Um, I want to one uh, final thing that I just quickly want to say. Uh, mine's a dummy data, but you'd also see these performance metrics, which you can uh, quickly use if it's in. Red color, that means you're pacing behind the market. Mine's dummy data, so I have zero bookings, which is why it's it's pacing uh, all in red, right? But in your, in your data set, you can see how are you doing relative to the market? Are you more occupied, less occupied? If it's in red, that means you're uh, less occupied than the market. If it's yellow, you're slightly under the market. Uh, if it's in green, then you're over the market. And if it's blue, uh, it's you're very over the market. This is uh, the number of like the booking window. So the next seven days, next 30 days, next 90 days. If you click these three dots, you can change this. And uh, normally I like to see these in blues, this in grease or yellows, and then this in reds, because I don't want to uh, personally book too far in advance. But if you want to book too far in advance, you want to change that. We are at time. I see there are a ton of questions and we've, uh, I know we've, tried to cover a we, bunch we, we, there. we've covered a bunch we've answered some in writing but if you don't mind i would just love to go back to the one slide you created that's how you're recapping yeah. everything we've seen today because i think it's really because people say oh if i have one property why do i look at and i think your slide was really capturing this so i'm going to show it again so you can yep. just uh, uh recap this I, I would just start by saying again the goal for us today was really to uh talk about big trends and you have this and you'll get you're going to get uh, the recording and we're still going to get send you the slides right so you have the slides where the record the trends are and the goal was first to say these are the trends you may hear about or you should know about and hopefully thanks to richie now you kind of know by leveraging price labs how you can see whether it's also happening in your market and for your listings so uh, richie again to summarize that how would you uh use the with the slides right how do you um what you've just seen yeah. Um, so uh, I know I know we, we tried to cover a bunch here, right? Uh, but again, uh, I would summarize this. Uh, uh, one, uh, if you're using uh, price labs and dynamic pricing, we are automatically tweaking this as we understand what's happening in the market, right? Sometimes you may want to get ahead in the market and sometimes your uh, operational or risk philosophies might change, right? Uh, the way I think about dynamic pricing is uh, you're essentially trying to uh, make money and it's no, no different than sometimes you're trying to invest, right? Sometimes you're trying to invest in CDs, sometimes you're trying to invest in mutual funds, sometimes you're trying to invest in uh, cryptos, right? And as price labs, we don't necessarily understand that, right? Um, so uh, sometimes you may want to say, hey, my view of 2023 is conservative. And so I want to underprice. And uh, one of the quick ways to do that is think about uh, how do I adjust my base pricing uh, to, to be on the relatively lower end of the market, right? Or I'm, I'm fairly bullish on 2023 and 
markets are uh, still not pricing it right, uh, I may want to increase my ADRs. But a good way for you to understand what's happening in the market is whether at market dashboards, try to understand occupancies, try to understand supply, whether at portfolio analytics level, see how your pacing related to the market. And also, um, in terms of neighborhood data, see how your how uh, the market is doing or your pro in your neighborhood around uh, for occupancies in the market, right? Both same time last year and at full occupancy. Um, I know we're over time, Thibaut, but uh, I think it's okay for us to spend 10 more minutes and try to answer the Q&A, if that's okay. Exactly, let's do that. Yeah. Do you want me to read questions for you and you uh, take them away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can, yeah, I can also keep going. Um, <laughs> oh, but, I know you can uh, keep going. <laughs> no, no, I job. can, I can, I can also look through it, but yeah, um, yeah. Um, um, so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of questions basically people saying, so maybe, in, in, you know, uh, I'm a price labs user. And for example, I don't see portfolio analytics in as a tab or, uh, the data I have is not, you know, I, I'm not sure. I just connected a month ago with Price Labs. Can it, it's going to see like 12 months of data. I think the best answer is to ask a support team, right? For this kind of questions, like very specific. Yeah. What's the yeah. best approach? If, if, it's, a, if, it's, a, yeah. if it's a very specific question, yes, uh, feel free to reach out to our support team. But I would, I would really, really request, right? Um, please do, we spend a lot of time going through and building through these trainings, right? Um, please do, uh, do uh, go through our 101s, 201s, uh, market dashboard trainings and portfolio analytics trainings uh, so that uh, you are uh, up to speed on how Price Labs works and um, it just helps us also scale effectively. Um, so it's, it's pricelabs.co slash trainings, I think. And the trainings are, as you said, some are at least weekly and some are even, and we do this in several languages as well sometimes, uh, if I'm yeah. not missing again, right? Absolutely. It's Absolutely. available at least in several languages. And uh, the other question, whether the tool will be in several languages, uh, you have something to say about this? Is uh, Price Lab going to be available in different languages? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're working on uh, we're working on releases on that end. Uh, we'll have uh, Price Labs in Spanish coming out very soon, and we're working on uh, Portuguese, French, and Italian. So in the next couple of months, you'd see uh, Price Labs uh, Price Labs available in various languages. Okay, uh, going back to uh, neighborhood data, can we edit the location listings that are chosen neighborhood? Can we pick um, them basically and choose them? Is to choose them. So yeah, so you can't really choose uh, listings, but let me quickly tell you two things. Right, one, um, this black dot that you'd see, uh, that's where uh, whatever system you're connected, whether Airbnb or whether uh, your PMS. That's that's telling us where your property is located. And based on that, we try to gather 300 to 350 nearby listings, right? Now, if this is wrong, uh, go change it in your PMS or Airbnb, and then come up here, click add reconnect. That will give us the new listing, new location data. If this date, if this location data is wrong, uh, it is like you, you do want this location data to be right. And there is no way to override this in Price Labs. We do get that from your PMS or from your uh, Airbnb account, right? Now, if you do did want to look at some of this in a very custom way, again, you could build a market dashboard, um, click this drop down, look at a market dashboard, and then look at that market dashboard's very specific comp set as well. And you'd see uh, all of this data very specific to whatever you wanted to do, right? We automatically choose that nearby listing. You can't change that. That location comes from your PMS or Airbnb or VRBO. If you want to change that, change it there. Um, and But if you want to create like an absolutely different comp set, right? Because uh, maybe I'm in Logan's, maybe I'm somewhere in Chicago and I want to compare some completely different area, that the way to do that will be via market dashboards. Another question here is about the data we looked at. I know, I know we looked at past performance and then we looked into the future as like, you know, data we already have. So once again, what is it? So we had several questions like, is data based on confirmed stays or book data? Another related question is, uh, is it how fresh is the data? How recent is it? Uh, the data, we, we uh, update this data set every day or second day, depending on depending on uh, what kind of a market are we in, right? But uh, at a minimum, every two days, the data gets refreshed, right? Um, and 
Confirmed stays and book data, what are we looking Confirmed at? Confirmed stays and book data, right? Um, so we're looking at uh, availabilities on Airbnb, right? So if, if something goes uh, unavailable, right? Um, that uh, is generally a confirmed stay, right? The a, a reality of a so we're looking at book data rather than confirmed stays. I, I guess is. So yeah. I'm guessing past performance is is whatever was actually booked and happened. Obviously, yeah, exactly. And, yeah, okay, exactly. Yeah. Here, super clear. Um, Somebody is asking: Can we use Price Labs to generate a report to be given to potential clients to show? Suggested suggested revenue, and I think it's uh, one actually of the use cases of our tools, right? How to do a absolutely, uh, absolutely, yeah. and uh, again, it'll, it'll take a bunch of time, but you can if you attend market dashboards training. This is one of the use cases that we go through, uh, and yeah, I mean it's available on demand as well. Uh, by the way, like if you click here in the uh, down here, and if you go to trainings, oh, if you go to say click two zero one. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, you'll see, and I'll I'll do this again because I was trying to play with this uh, live. But if you click this hat thing, if you go to trainings, if you go to either one one hundred one or two hundred one, you'll see all of the trainings that we run. Right, one hundred one every day. Uh, what do we talk about? Two zero one. What do we talk about? Market dashboards. If you're not, and if you're not client again, you can if you you have access to it as well, right? Price low. Everyone. Price low has training, free trainings, free trainings, people. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, we talk about this PDF so again. So I guess market dashboard, indeed, right? I can get a PDF that I can hand over maybe to a client with you some can, metrics yeah. over the exactly. year, for example. Right? You can you can scroll down. You'll see an option of generate PDF. You'll see the same in um, in um, portfolio analytics as well. And then this is also something new. But uh, you can go into settings, and uh, you can actually even where is it? Oh, you can update your brand logo uh, if you have if you're a property management company, and so those will also show up on those uh, on those reports. That's pretty impressive for an, to show to an owner. Uh, uh, speaking of trainings, uh, when it comes to neighborhood data, uh, where can I find some training about it? Um, we cover neighborhood data in quite a bit detail in the one hundred one uh, training section. One hundred one training. So Price Labs one hundred one. Click this thing. Go to training. Uh, click price steps 101 you can also just uh if you if you prefer to read if you click this uh and uh, search for neighborhood data here uh, uh can't type neighborhood data you'd see for example listing neighborhood data come up and uh we go into quite a bit detail about what exactly the, is there is everything on this uh on this uh page about neighborhood data uh, quick question about our services in the sense that uh, we, I think we have, as you said, we have a support team and you mentioned how uh, it's uh, available uh, all weekdays and limited support weekends. We also have account managers. How does that work, account managers? Who basically, who has an account manager and, or uh, yeah, question about this. Who is assigned an account manager? Um Typically, if you have more than 50 properties, uh, that's when uh, we get we have account managers assigned. Okay. Um, uh, it's yeah, it's it's just extremely expensive uh, to work on one on one uh, methods. Yeah, but it may happen also when we when you send a ticket that the account manager does answer, right? So this, this level of knowledge is available to anyone, but you are assigned someone if you're a bigger account, clearly. 100%, 100%, right? Uh, if, depending on the scale of the account, it, it makes sense for us to have someone dedicated. But every single person in Price Labs uh, is vetted very, very carefully and trained very, very carefully. Um, and so so they uh, have, like I have no doubts that they have uh, skill sets uh, to be able to answer questions. And shout out to Anik Raw, who says that support team is really great and time to say thank you. So thank you, Anik, and we'll uh, share it with the support team. Um, yeah, then we have more, again, more questions about people saying that they have an issue with the way they're using the product or some product. Again, the best way is indeed to contact the support team to really, really able to get into your own settings. Um, uh, how would I get the recording? We're going to send you an email and with the email, you're going to get a link to the recording. So I'm not promising today or tonight, uh, but probably to tomorrow, the day after latest. Um uh, somebody had a question. Uh, I think we're almost 
uh good uh i think we're good actually um yeah i think we're good for most of the questions richie okay very cool um for if if there are any questions that we have not been able to get to we are going to uh look through these questions again and and try yeah. to answer them uh one-on-one -on -one as well right but again like tipo said if there were questions that we weren't able to get to please do feel free to reach out to our support team uh, we'll we'll happily uh, reply back to you. For some oddity, uh, I I do want to acknowledge this on the call as well. But in the last uh, uh, five or six days, we have seen a major spike on uh, support, and so we're uh, we are running a little bit behind on on our responses. Right? Um, maybe maybe everyone's uh, come back after New Year's and really digging into their price steps accounts right uh, but uh, we are we are seeing a, a, a massive spike on our support um, and uh, so so right now we're running a little bit behind in being able to answer your queries cool well thanks for being transparent that's really nice it's dynamic pricing right unfortunately uh, hopefully hopefully that that uh, maybe tells some people to uh, tailor their questions or, or or maybe ask them a little later if it's not important enough right cool. well thanks everyone for attending let me just check the still the still uh the still 173 three people attending 15 minutes past the time so good job everyone uh thanks for attending again um the recording will be shared with you by through an email um most probably is going to be a quick recap on rental scale up as an article as usual when we do events um all right thanks for attending thanks richie for co-hosting anything we need to add no uh thank you so much everyone uh really really appreciate the love and support again we we try to keep uh price apps cost as low as possible try to provide uh these trainings as much as possible right uh if you have uh if you know anyone else who thinks who you think can benefit from price labs please do uh share about price labs so that uh Hopefully, we can continue to uh, do this more and more. All right. Share the love. And uh, to everyone, have a great 2023 year. Thank you so Bye much. Everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.